Welcome everyone, I'm Lisa Gonzalez, Chief Meditation Officer from Meditation for Leadership, and we are a nonprofit organization on a mission to bring you the benefits of meditation. We work largely with organizations, helping them to understand how the simple yet challenging practice can help them become more effective in their, in their work life, in their home life, really all around. So today I'd love to share a couple things with you. First, what meditation is and what it isn't. Why most people struggle with creating a consistent practice. Some of the science and what, what we know about how this changes your body and your brain. And some tips on creating a practice at home. So the biggest thing that I hear from time to time is, I know I've read the benefits, I know it's good for me, but it's not for me because I can't stop my mind. And that's the biggest myth that we wanna bust. The point of meditation is not to stop your thoughts. Your mind travels in two directions, generally. The future, all the things that you need to do on your to-do list, or the past, ruminating about something that has happened um, you know, yesterday or last week. The, t the goal of meditation is to keep practicing being present. There's so many times in our lives that we are doing something, but we're not fully present. Working on a, a presentation, working on an assignment, having a conversation. And when we are not fully present with what's happening or what's in front of us, then that suffers. So what we do when we sit every, every morning or every afternoon is practice being present. Not trying to stop our mind, but simply noticing when it's wandering. Sometimes I'll even say, oh, that's future. <laughs> oh, that's past. Come right back. Taking a breath in, taking a breath out, feeling the sensations of your breath because your breath is universal. It's always with you. Feeling the sensations of your breath coming in, your breath going out to help you re-anchor into that present moment. So the minute we understand that we're not trying to stop our mind, but we're simply just sitting back and observing it, we are empowering ourselves to learn how to breathe through the ups and downs of our lives. We are empowering ourselves by creating this leadership trait of grit by starting again. Our, our mind will wander, start again. And when you first start this practice, you might be starting again with every inhale, every exhale. That's okay. There is no such thing as a unsuccessful meditation. Anytime you sit and practice paying attention to your breath, that is going to make an impact in your life. So we're learning how to breathe through the discomfort. We're learning how to be present without judgment. That's a huge part, a part that we'll work on the rest of our lives is when we find our mind wandering, not judging or not telling ourselves a story like I'm bad at this or this isn't for me, is compassionately, patiently, and persistently starting again. What we know is that it doesn't take a long time when you sit. You can start with five minutes a day. Most of the research shows that there's changes in the body and the brain at 10 minutes a day. When you can establish a practice for 10 minutes a day, consistent daily practice, you will start to feel the changes. You won't feel it when you're actually sitting. And that's another reason why people often fail is they don't continue it because they think that it's gonna be blissful and peaceful and they're gonna feel it right away. You will start to notice it a couple weeks into it, you'll see, oh, I'm not reacting as much. Maybe somebody says something that rubs you the wrong way, but instead of reacting, you have learned and trained your brain to create space to choose how to respond rather than react. And, and this is so representative too in what we see in the science and the brain scans. When you look at a scan, a brain scan of somebody who, who consistently meditates, we see that there's not as these big spikes in thought and there's space in between. You are practicing creating that space to choose how to respond rather than react. And the implications of that are so impactful. You're also practicing learning how to, to be 
comfortable in the discomfort, which in our society these days, we, we want everything comfortable, everything easy. But learning how to keep a calm, equanimous mind in those ups and downs are so powerful. The science is more and more science every day of how this practice helps you retain attention, focus, perform better on tasks that deal with focus and attention. It creates a greater sense of awareness of individually and as a community. You start to learn how to listen to people without judging when you start to learn to listen to yourself without judging. We know that it, it affects the stress levels in our, in our body and it helps us connect by strengthening the areas of our brain that deal with empathy and connection and compassion. So a couple tips for starting your own practice. Start small, five minutes a day. You can set a timer on your phone so you're not necessarily checking each every minute or so. Just set a timer on your phone, set it aside, and just sit. It could be anywhere. It doesn't have to. You don't need a perfect meditation room. You don't need to travel to the beach or a tropical island. You can do this practice sitting right at your desk. Take some uh, intentional breaths. Feel your breath. Let that be your anchor anytime your mind wanders. And meet yourself with grace and compassion. It's not easy, but if you commit to this, they say 21 days creates a habit, right? Just commit, make it a, a non-negotiable for a month and then see if you can experience the benefits, if you feel a difference. When you get to that point, that when you can feel it, when you start to see how you're more present in conversations, how you're less reactive, how you feel and you can take deep breaths throughout the day, to redirect yourself. When you start to experience that, that is when you, you won't have to convince yourself to sit. You'll understand the importance of it and it'll become part of your day. We are here at Meditation for Leadership to help you. We have some, if you check up our website, meditation, the number four leadership.org. There's lots of guided meditations there, um, lots of tips and tricks to create a practice. I wish you well on your journey, one breath at a time.